we are still with math language and math symbols. So in this video, what we shall do is, we shall work on a word problem. Our goal is to write this word problem into math sentence using the math symbols and math notations that we know. And then we shall solve it towards the end. Example 1.17. Find the minimum score to pass. To pass the course, a student must achieve at least a general average of 75 points in three major exams. Ms. Balabanan scored 70 and 65 in her first two exams. What minimum score must she get in the third exam to pass the course? So a familiar problem. This, this is going to be a familiar situation you might find yourself because you are interested not only to pass the course but also to get high grades because you are concerned with maintaining your scholarship and you wish to graduate with honors. So this is something that can happen to you. So the average, this is our symbol for the average. The average must be at least 75. That is how you write it. How do you obtain the average? It is the sum of three scores. At least for this problem, you have three exams. It is the sum of three scores divided by three. We are using your subscripted variables here. X sub 1 stands for the score in exam 1. X sub 2 is the score in exam 2. X sub 3 is the score in exam 3. The value of this must be greater than or equal to 75. Okay, so can you think of a math symbol that will help us or that will allow us to write this in even shorter form? Okay, in a form that uses fewer characters but actually means the same thing. So what would that be? Well, that would be the sigma notation, the summation notation, okay? So we can write this one in sigma notation. So how do you read this? The summation of x sub i, i from 1 to 3. Because you have three data here. You have three scores divided by 3. And that must be greater than or equal to 75. So this is our goal. Our first goal is to write it in a math sentence. Our next goal is to solve it. What must be Ms. Malabanan's third score so that this equation or this inequality becomes true? So let us solve for x sub 3. So 70 plus 65 plus x sub 3 all over 3 is greater than or equal to 75. How do you solve for x sub 3? We multiply both sides by 3. Then we isolate x sub 3. x sub 3 must be greater than or equal to 90. So her score, Miss Malabanan's score must be greater than or equal to 90 if she wants to pass the course. I always encounter this at the end of the semester because students ask me before the final exam what must be their score in the finals, not only to pass the exam, but to but so that they can meet a certain grade and maintain their scholarship in the process. Some of them are also aiming to graduate with honors. So they are concerned with this, with these issues. Well, what I do is I do not help them. I mean, come on, it's a math problem and I, we are in a math course. So it's your responsibility to compute for that yourself. Now, I will say something about the general average that you will use in college, it's not simply the summation of, of four major exams. No, it's not that. What you will use here in college is the general weighted average. Weighted. Each score has a weight. Just like in a beauty pageant, you know, when the MC says 45% will go to Q&A, 20% will go to popularity vote, so on and so forth, the announcer or the MC is telling you the weight of the criteria. Each criteria has a weight. It's the same with your grades in college. Each exam has its weight. They are not the same in weight. So sometimes it depends in the school. So here, let's say for example, we have N exams. So in some schools, you only have two major exams. In other schools, there are four. 
So if there are four exams, your n here will be four. So we can look at x sub 1 as the prelims, x sub 2 the midterms, x sub 3 the semifinals, and x sub 4 the final exam. Each of those exams would have weights. W sub i stand for or stands for the weight. So what we do is we multiply the score times the weight of that exam. So the weights are in decimal numbers. Okay, It's a fraction. And the total of those weights should be equal to 100% or 1. So this is how we write it in a compact form. Okay, so this is what we should aim in this course, to write math problems in such a way that we are demonstrating that we know the math symbols and math notations that go with those problems. So your situation can be something like this. You got a score of 78 in the prelims, 80 in the midterms, 85 in the semifinals, and next week is your final exam. You are interested to get an overall average of, of at least 80. So what must be your score in the final exam? Okay, so you already know your scores. But for the weights, usually the teacher must say what is the weight of each exam. But just in case you forgot it, you ask your teacher what is the weight of your prelims, midterms, and semifinal exams. And then from here, you will now compute for x sub 4. So something like this can happen to you towards the end of the semester.